One of the biggest issues galvanizing the Republican Party right now is whether or not transgender girls should play on girls' sports teams. Eight states have passed bills to prevent trans women from playing girls' sports at the high school and college level. More could follow suit. Ben Jacobs profiles the lead conservative organization trying to rally voters around this hot-button issue in his latest piece for Vice. The group is called the American Principles Project, and it is pushing what they call pro-family issues across the country. Ben Jacobs joins me now from Washington. He's a Vice contributor. Hi, Ben. Great to see you. So the Hi. person leading this group is a gentleman named Terry Schilling. Tell us a little bit more about him and how has the American Principles Project gained so much influence over the years? Um, Terry Schilling is the son of former Congressman Bobby Schilling, who served one term in the House about 10 years ago. Uh, and they built this group that's a pre-existing group that really in the post-Trump era, after Trump took office in 2016, that's really dug deep on some of these uh, what they call pro-family issues and really trying to move the needle uh, on trans, trans girls playing sports in particular, that they got through the fights over bathroom bills a few years ago and saw how that was unsuccessful and really trying to figure out what issues that they can move the needles on social conservative issues and where there's the potential for crossover appeal that doesn't doesn't just reach out to sort of the usual suspects on the right and whether they have the ability with some of these issues to actually make any sort of electoral impact. And they've been trying so far with limited success, so though they claim they've moved numbers, it hasn't been enough to notch victories for them so far in any of the races they've really tried. So you write in your piece that, quote, the goal of the group is not just to be a political action committee, but a full-fledged membership organization that would invoke the same fear in politicians that the gun lobby has for a generation. So do you believe that this fear that uh, this group seems to be fomenting um, leads to a lot of political power? And, and what exactly is the fear that this group is um, is sort of it's what is it that these elections. families are so scared of, right? But what is yeah. it that they're making the families scared of? Oh, what they're making the families scared of um, is particular that whether this is about economic opportunity. That obviously the you know most of the issues around LGBTQ rights don't really pull well anymore. That if you're on the anti-LGBTQ rights side. You've lost fights, you've lost fights over marriage, over non-discrimination, over bathroom stuff, and that this is a fight that they can end up spinning into something that's as much about economic opportunity, that this is the fact that in obviously a time of less economic mobility, that you know this will cost uh, folks scholarships, that this creates an unfair battlefield, that they've, they've pinned this in the way that this is not trying to demonize folks, which is what you saw with the bathroom bills fights a couple of years ago, where the idea is that if you let your children go to a bathroom with a with a trans person, that they would be somehow vulnerable. This is just that this somehow creates an unfair competition. Folks lose out on scholarships. That it's sort of pulling back in terms of really the outermost limits of the culture or fights as the progressive side mm -hmm. has pretty much swept the table over the past 10, 15, 20 years. And this is trying to sort of roll back and sort of reframe the issue in a way that becomes sort of more about parents and more about opportunity rather than try to explicitly demonize people, but as opposed to level of implicit demonization, mm -hmm. which is an entirely different thing. So this is a culture war that is closely tied to economics, you're saying? Yes. Yes, that this is much more tied and to sort of these economic fights. And you can see in the rhetoric that they're deeply concerned about corporate America, that this is sort of an argument sort of to a throwback view of, of America and for how families, how families work. And part of it is frankly the fact that this traditional nuclear family structure, what they you know claim represents the family structure, is now, you know, there's the claim, you know, Terry Schilling is the father of five and talked about going out to restaurants with his five or five kids and, you know, feeling like a freak, that it really is folks on the back foot of some of these cultural wars trying to push forward in a way that you know, several decades ago, you wouldn't necessarily see that this is very much a defensive step rather than, than it, even though it appears to be an offensive step, this is trying to consolidate whatever little gains you have on the battlefield rather than 
trying to sort of win the day and reframe all these issues, because obviously on issues ranging from marriage to non-discrimination, you could go down the list, the culture war is over. You know, the progressive side won, and this is sort of much more of a defensive step. And Ben, how successful do you see this group as being in politics going forward? Because you do note that the group was active in the 2019 Kentucky governor's race, but Democrats won. Uh, you know, in 2020, of course, former President Trump lost, as did APP's candidates in states like Michigan and Georgia. Um, do you have an idea of what their plans might look like heading into the 2022 midterms? Are they changing their game plan at all in light of those losses? They insist that they've been successful, that they move numbers and get one voters who otherwise wouldn't have. But the idea is to put in more money and to put in more investment, you know, that they're talking about spending well over $10 million and trying to pick their spots to get to get scouts that, uh, you know, from their point of view, it's that creating political incentives where uh, political leaders who want to take progressive steps on some of these issues want to think twice because there are consequences. Um, especially as corporate America has become far more progressive on these social issues. So it's attempt to be some sort of counterweight and balance, uh, and balance that out and particularly appeal to sort of the newer Trumpier wing of the Republican Party. But this is not something that will that works for the Paul Ryan wing of the party, but sort of the new Ron DeSantis wing that's emerged out of it uh, in trying to appeal to sort of those who take the social conservative so culture war stuff far more seriously than uh, free market economics. New allegiances and new battleground uh, lines being drawn. Interesting, you made the point that uh, they're taking, uh, they're sort of moving away from this liber libertarian view that um, seemed to encompass a lot of the Republican Party earlier. Yes, this, this is entirely moving away from sort of the traditional view of the Republican Party. And, you know, they're very sort of that having government do things and having government uh, intervene actively to achieve policy outcomes they want, that it's not the that it's not the policy outcomes that obviously Democrats, progressives would want, but it's also very different from those traditionally on the right, sort of the more traditional free market conservatives who wouldn't want the government to intervene at all and taking steps in order to, you know, they're active on tech issues as well and cracking down on big tech, that it's very much this sort of this new post-Trump idea of the party um, where you've seen Josh Hawley, you've seen a couple of other folks where government, using government for conservative ends, particularly social conservative ends, uh, traditional ends, rather than sort of the more libertarian ethos that has infused the Republican Party uh, from Goldwater to Reagan uh, until relatively recently. Ben Jacobs, really great piece there for Vice. Thank you so much for joining us and telling us about it. Thank you.